sure glad all of you all came just to hear me today, you know. You know, it's so nice when you have to bring extra chairs in because you came to hear me, right? No, no, that's not the reason. This is this is neat, isn't it, that we ladies get to get together? You know what I felt so badly about in there? We couldn't get them going in there. Did you notice it? They, everybody was so dead. And you girls, I looked around and I saw it on your face. You wanted to cheer and get everybody going because that's our, that's our lot in life, isn't it? Did you feel that way? She's going, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> Them guys are sitting there like a bunch of deadheads. <laughs> So I said, you know, I, here, every once in a while I go, Woo, you know, try to get something going, but nothing would break loose. So I come in here and look, you're all going crazy. You're hanging from the chandeliers, wild, wild. Isn't it great to be a girl? You know, I, I love being a girl. I'm really glad I'm not Bucky Tucker. And I'm super glad I'm not Bubba Jones. Man, he is, he is so weird, isn't he? Someday I need to make myself want, you know, not bu Mrs. Bubba Jones, because I have an another nut I'm already married to, but uh, something else that will be fun to be. But I just love being a girl, and I've been thinking about you girls for about two months. I think that's when it is that Brother Fielder called and said, would you speak to the ladies? Believe it or not, people really think about what they're going to say before they get up here and talk. You know, I pray about it, of course. You know, I want God in it. No, no need me just talking. But uh, I also thought about you all. And I know, how many of you already know who I am? Okay, I know masses of you. And I love going around the church. You saw me having a party before the services started, didn't you? I just love, when my kids aren't around, I love my children. Don't get me wrong. You know, I have a 15-month-old. No. 17, I keep messing up, 17 month old and a four year old and I love them to death. But when they're around, I'm, I'm mom and I got to watch them, make sure they're not uh, climbing up in the baptistry and doing things like that when they're at churches. So when they're not around, I just have a blast going around talking to people. And you girls, you were so much fun to talk to and so many of you let me take pictures. I'm doing a book. I'm helping with the book. So that's what I needed the pictures for. You didn't know it. Now none of you will ever let me take your picture. But I'll get you between on breaks. Don't worry, I will. It's about dress and things like that. I'm helping with it. The illustrations. I won't actually use your picture. I'm just using your out, out, outfits for the artist. But anyway, you all are so nice to me and so wonderful. I've been thinking about you. I've been praying for you and wondering, what do those girls need? You know that you girls are from the churches in this area that really live for God. You're from so winning, aggressive churches, most of you. And most of you live in Christian homes, and we have a few here that are not from Christian homes, and I know it, and I'm glad you're here because I didn't, I wasn't raised in a Christian home, but I thought, what could I speak on that would help the girls? You know, you don't want to get up here and talk and just make people laugh and not really help them, so I thought, what could I speak on that would be a help? Then I started thinking back to my teenage years. Oh, what a misery it is to think back. Honest, I'm 33 now and proud of it. I am glad. Anybody ask me how old I am? I'll tell you. I'm glad to be old. You know, they say, aren't you afraid to get, you know, you teenagers start to make me feel bad. Oh, you're getting old, Mrs. Walker. No, I'm not getting old. I'm getting better. I, the older I get, the better I get, and the more I like it. So it's not bad getting old. And I'd, I wouldn't want to go back to the teenage years for nothing. How many of you older ladies would, would agree with that? Yes, amen, amen. Oh, oh. So, and I feel so sorry. For, I feel sorry for you. This is the, this is the time, you know, I, part of the book that I'm writing, you're going to laugh at this, but part of the book that I'm writing is about how different styles of dress hide figure flaws. Okay? Well, I started looking at you teenagers and I thought, this is sickening. None of you have figure flaws yet. You don't know anything about a spread, you know, hair or, you know, having big shoulders. You don't have that problem. Most of you are about the same size, you know, a nice size. So I said, this is ridiculous. I can't use teenagers. Any of you older ladies would like to volunteer for me to take your picture? No. <laughs> so, so when I was thinking about you, I thought, now what can I, what can I talk to that would be a blessing to them? Now, I want to warn you. I am a person that has to look at people's eyes. That's why I moved that one girl back there that's got her head down <coughs> right now, turn around, look up here at me, you see me. Uh, so if I see you with your head down, I will call you because if I know, if your head's down, I don't know that you're listening and I don't want to stand up here and just talk to, a, you know, the top of your head, you know, I want to see your eyes, you know, know you're listening. So I thought, what can I talk about? I know everybody wants to be liked, don't you? You know, I, I know that men sometimes say, I don't care if you like this or not, I'm going to say it. You, you ever heard men say that? Well, I'm so sensitive. When my husband gets really going and he preaches hard, you're going to find out this afternoon, 
I just sit there and cringe sometimes. And some of you preachers' wife, under, you understand because you just sit there and cringe. Nobody's going to like him after this service, you know. <laughs> They're all going to walk right by him. They're going to think he's some kind of a mean monster, you know. So I, I think us ladies are made a little different. We like to be liked. So I've been thinking about you girls. And I've been thinking, now, why is it that, that there are girls in this room that don't feel liked? You know, why do you not feel liked? By boys. Oh, that's easy, Mrs. Walker. They're stupid. <laughs> Wasn't that easy? I solved that one. You know, now you know it's just because the guys are dumb that they don't like you. And why is it that people don't, my friends don't like me? Or maybe not friends, but peers. People in your own school don't like you. Why is that? Then I thought about, now, why is it some of these girls know their parents love them? They know it. Without a shadow of a doubt, because they told you, you know, I'll provide for you, I'll do this for you. You know, you know that they love you because they provide for you and try to take care of you. But some of you, I wonder if you really understand that your parents like you. My preacher in Martinsburg, West Virginia, where I grew up the, uh, and got saved, my preacher said to me when I left for college, he said, Red, that's what they called me there, don't you call me that, but he called me that. He said, Red, he says, you know, I really love you. And I said, oh, thanks, preacher. You know, I, I love you too. You know that? And he said, but I want you to know something. He said, not only do I love you, but I like you too. He said, because there's people that God says we have to love everybody. But there's also people that we're supposed to, that we naturally like. You know, he said, I like you. And I said, oh, you know, I went away feeling like, oh, I'm something special. You know what I mean? You, and so I thought, now, why is it some of these girls don't really think their preachers like them or that their mom and dad like them? Or their teachers like them. So I, I don't know if I have the answer. But I've thought of a few things that might help you. Might help you understand. The people on that very back row, Jennifer, the one on the road with you, that one girl, I, can't, I know she can't see me because her head's right behind that other girl. If she can move her chair around, that would help her a lot. Jennifer, two chairs over from you. One, two. Not you, Jennifer. The other Jennifer that just gave her testimony. I'm sorry. Too many Jennifers in this room. How many Jennifers do we have? Oh, four. Oh, five. No wonder you're wondering. What's Jennifer? Back there. Can you see me in the aisle? Behind the girl. See, this one girl, I'm trying to get her to be able to see me. And the other girl sitting in front of her moves her head like this. And so she looks over and they, they're just going all to the side like that. Well, anyway, I want you to move around as much as you can so you can hear what I've got to say. When I was growing up, it's very hard for you to believe this. Looking at me now, I am a size 10. I'm glad I'm a size 10. I have two children. I work at staying a size 10. But when I was growing up, I was not, I was a size 10, but you weren't supposed to be at eight years old. You know that? <laughs> I, I was a very chubby person. I was one of those people that uh, mom used to have to go to Sears and get the chubby sizes, you know, the half sizes. I'm embarrassed to tell you, but it's the truth. And my hair, you know, now I wear permanent, so it looks kind of, it looks kind of nice. I can't say it looks beautiful all the time, especially if you see me at camp. But, <laughs> but, so, you know, I, I know how to perm it, and it looks pretty good. It's real thin. You know, I can't do a thing with it. Then I have this double crown back here that I have to fight to cover up because it makes me look like I'm bald. <laughs> Brother Randy Taylor said the other day, I was joking around with him, and he said, and he's talking about but my husband losing his hair, you know, and other people losing their hair, and I said, yeah, I'm afraid I'm losing it. I was being serious, you know, I'm afraid I'm losing it right here, and he said, oh, oh, that'd be great. Brother Randy Taylor's my boss, so I have to put up with this. But anyway, he said, that'd be great. He said, I can see it now. The billings will be, come see the bald-headed woman at Mount Taylor Revival Ground. <laughs> I thought, very funny, very funny. <laughs> but anyway, so I've ha I have to work at this. Even when I was a kid, you know, and so my hair was thin. I want you to picture how awfully ugly I must have been when I was younger. I was, I was, my hair was thin, so it wouldn't do things. And I didn't know to keep perms in it, so it would just straggle down, you know. And I didn't feel, I wasn't a feminine little frilly girl like some of you cuties that wear bows and things like that. So, you know, sometimes I'd pull it all up and put it kind of not up here, you know, and wear it like that. But anyway, I had this big body. And what, you can't conceal a good body. Those of you that understand what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Well, when I was in third grade, my, my family had a fire in the house. So we lost everything we owned, including my clothes. Now, when you are a 14 and a half and you lose your clothes, it's really hard because the chubby clothes are much more expensive. We didn't have any money, you know all the stories. So my, these people started giving us clothes. Now, when you're heavy, 
and you're only eight years old, and people are giving you clothes, it's embarrassing. Because they give you the clothes that are supposed to fit an eight-year-old, and it doesn't fit. You know, it's all too tight. You know, I can't zip it up. You know, I, so what happens is you have to go to lady size clothes, you know. So I remember. The reason why I tell this story is to let you know I understand how you feel sometimes when you feel like people don't like you. So this one dress, I'll never forget it. So people would start giving us clothes. And you know when you're eight years old, you don't, I don't have much anyway, up, you know, up here, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but when I was eight years old, I had absolutely nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Well, they gave me ladies' clothing. Do you know what ladies' clothing have? No, mine's a raglan sleeve, so you can't tell. But ladies' clothing have big darts. Go up here. They're, they're supposed to help with this up here, you know, so it doesn't fit so tightly across your chest, you know. So they have these big darts, and they give me these clothes, and I put them on, and I look at myself, and because I was flat chested, the darts would go down to my waistline. <laughs> well, well, here I am, this stringy hair, a heavy set, chubby girl, with flat chested, with darts going down to my waistline. <laughs> to make matters worse, worse, I was a big mouth. I've never changed. You notice that, haven't you? <laughs> so I'd constantly get myself into trouble with the words that I'd use. All that made me, you know, feel very insecure about myself. I didn't really like myself when I was eight years old. It got a little better when I was a teenager because I got hepatitis. Now, I never pray for a sickness like that, but I got it, lost weight, and I enjoyed being skinny so much that I kept the weight down. So during those times, I remember back when I was eight years old and didn't like myself. And I've thought about that more in the last two months, thinking about what I was going to talk to you, because right now, I'll be quite honest with you, I like myself pretty good. And you know what else? I really believe there are very few people that I meet that don't like me. You know why? Because I work at it. I'm going to show you some of my techniques, <laughs> some of my things that I do to try to make people like me. Now, you realize, of course, that there are some people you're never going to make them like you. You can stand on your head. You can give them $5,000 and they'll never like you. So that it's not going to fit for everybody, but in some cases they will like it. Now, another thing that I had a problem about when I was growing up as a teenager that probably helped me not to be liked very well was I had a terrible, you're, you're not going to believe it because I'm a redhead, you know, but I had a terrible temper. Ah, people, they just were constantly saying things to me to make me mad. You know, I just felt like they were picking on me, trying to get me to react. One time, and this is so hard for you to believe, but I wasn't saved till I was 17 years old. One time, my brother came home from Vietnam, and he brought home a pearl-handled switchblade. Now, in those days, they were, Ill they were illegal. I think they still are, come think of it. But uh, I thought I was hot stuff, so I carried that switchblade with me. A pearl handled switchblade. Now, a switchblade, if you don't know what it is, you pop this little button and this thing flies out at you and it looks fierce. It looks really scary. I used to have to walk six blocks to go to school in junior high. How many of you are in junior high right now? Eighth grade. I was in eighth grade, junior high. I was walking to school one morning after just getting that prized possession, that switchblade, walking all by myself, and this boy came up to me and he had this black wire. You know, black wire thing, and they, you know, when you are, when you, when people know you react a lot, they try to get you to react a lot. You know, when they know you will fire up at them because you mean get mad, you know, they'll, they'll pick on you even more. So this boy would come up to me, he'd take this black rope, a black wire from an extension cord or something, and hit the back of my leg. <laughs> Every time he hit my leg, I said, you get away from me. You are, you know, and I, I used some words I wouldn't dare say right here, you know, right now. But I was really upset with this. And I was walking down the street, and when I walked down the street to get to school, I had to go right by the sheriff's office. Now, no joking, I was so silly. So, I'm walking down the street, and this guy's taking this thing, and I said, man, I'm getting fed up with this. You ever tired of people teasing you, giving you a hard time? So, I, I reached in my pocket, I said, listen. I said, if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to do something. He said, yeah, you know how to do it. Yeah, what are you going to do? They think, oh, girls can't do anything. You know, you can't, you're just a little sissy. You can't take, you can't take care of yourself. You know, I can, you know. But I, so I said, you know, I'm going to do something. He said, what are you going to do? And I pulled out that switchblade. I popped the button and that thing went flying out. That, it, was a, it was a black boy. I'm telling you, girls. Not, now, I don't say that because he was a, just because he was black, he did it. Because white boys, hurt. They, they made me as mad as the black ones did. But he got... 
his eyes went wide, wide like this. And he says, what you gonna do that? I said, I'm gonna slit your throat open if you don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> like that? I'm like, I saw off to school like that, and he ran out. I was right across from the sheriff's office. Isn't that stupid? I looked back at some of the things. So I got to school that day, and of course, everybody knew it. Hey, Loretta Walker's, Loretta Haynes, oh, Loretta Haynes got a switchblade with it, you know what I got? So I had to conceal it in my locker. I had to hide it so no one knew. But I want you to know that boy never bothered me again. I won that vet parade. But not really. The reason why I told you those two stories is to help you understand something. Sometimes the reason why you, you aren't liked is because you don't like yourself. You know, I've admitted to you. I was chunky, very chunky. I had straight hair. I didn't wear makeup. I didn't know anything, you know. And so I didn't feel like I was an attractive person. When I look back at how I felt about myself, I say, boy, isn't that silly that I felt that way? You know why I can say that now? Because I'm 33 and I like myself. I have the maturity now to look back and see, hey, the things that I felt important then were not important, you know. Then when I think about that episode with the switchblade, I get embarrassed. You know, I tell it, you know, and you laugh a little bit, but it's embarrassing to think that I thought I was a hot shot. You know, I thought I was mean. I, you know, I was going to show people. They weren't going to run over me by pulling out a switchblade and showing, you know, telling them to stay away from me. Now, isn't that silly? Now, let me ask you something. When you were a child, do you remember ever getting lost in a store? Anybody ever remember that? You know, what, what happened to you? Some people, you know, my, my husband, he hides from his mother when he was four years old, you know. He climbs, he opens up the thing and climbs in, waits for her to start screaming, where's my son, you know. But I bet you, you girls, when, when, you were in, when you were younger, that when you got lost in a store, you got really scared. You couldn't think, where would the car, you know, you didn't know where the car would be, you didn't know, all you knew was this woman that you held, called mom, you couldn't find her anywhere. So it really scared you. Now let me ask you something. Have you gotten lost in the store lately? You know, if you get away from your mom now, do you go into tears, hysterics, cry? No, you say, of course not, Mrs. Walker. That's silly, isn't it? Well, you know what happens to us girls? As we, as we grow older, we get something on us that people use against you sometimes. Oh, why don't you grow up? Why don't you mature? Yeah, you know, they give you one of those numbers. Well... What happens is, as we mature, we're able to handle things a little better. You know, as a four-year-old, you shouldn't be able to handle being in a big store all by yourself. And you know what? As an eight-year-old, I really didn't know how to handle not looking good, not knowing how to dress, not how, you know, I didn't, I didn't know how to handle all those things. So you know what happened? I had to mature. So how do I, how am I going to be liked, Mrs. Walker? How, how can I be liked? Let me read some verses to you. you got to get the Bible on this, and then we're going to pray. 1 Corinthians 3, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am Paul, and another, I am Paulus, are ye not carnal? You know what, the, what it, Paul's talking about there? He's talking about being an immature Christian. He's talking about maturity in itself. So, he says here, he says, are ye not carnal? He's talking about because you were just a babe, you have to have, you have, to have milk. Eat of the milk of the word instead of the meat. Now, I don't think you're babes in Christ right now. I think that you are a little bit older than that. But let's discuss some ways that you can be liked by some things that you can change in your life. See, I don't want to encourage you. I want to say, do it now. I love the theme. Do it now. Yeah, you. there are some things you can do right now to improve the way your friends like you, to improve the way boys like you, to improve the way your parents like you, to improve the way your leaders like you. And I'm going to tell you those in just a minute. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these girls, Lord. I sense there's a, a warmness or something that's making them restless, some of them even sleepy. It doesn't offend me that they're sleepy, Lord, but if you've given me something for them to hear, I pray that you'll help us to get woken up. I pray you'll help us to sit up on our seats, whatever we have to do, so that we'd be able to hear and understand. Lord, use my lips to say the words you'd say. I talk an awful lot, Lord, but I hope this time I'm talking for you and that you'll be a blessing to all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so how can you be, how can you be liked by boys? 
Do you know what? In our in our search for being in our seeking for being liked by boys, I think we're dipping our sails. Okay, let me explain this. I get so fed up with girls being the aggressors. I think I don't want I didn't want to have to chase after my husband. He tells jokes and says I ask him to marry you know, he says all kinds of stuff like that, but he knows I was not the aggressor. I get a little shocked, if you don't mind me saying, and I'm only 33, I'm not this old prudent lady, you know, I get a little shocked when I hear that girls are calling guys on the phone. So I think, now, why do they call guys on the phone? Why are they being the aggressor? Why do you have your friend go up and say, Lori likes you, did you know that? You, know, or you, get, uh, you go up and you tell him, you, some of you are so bold, you go up and you just talk to him and act like, you know, well, I think there's a, there's a, a, an appropriateness about being a lady that makes boys like you. Now, Jennifer, when you gave your um, testimony, you walked up there like a little lady, you know, and I thought, oh, I, that's never been me, you know. So a lady's not just a lady that looks so nice and talks so, and you know how Brother Ken says she's meek? Well, there's not a meek bone in my body, you know, not like a little finger, nothing. But I hope that I'm a lady. Do you know what a lady does? A lady sits back and waits an awful lot. Meaning, when you go to the door, I mean it, girls. I wish we could start a trend in our Christian schools and churches. Let's start making the guys be gentlemen. Well, you say, but how? You know what you do? You allow them to open the door for you. They say, oh, they won't open the door for me. They open it, they'll walk through it themselves first. You know what? If we start making them act like gentlemen, I think we'll see a change in their attitude toward us. I don't like it. I don't like it when I see a teenage girl and guy and the girl's standing there, and she comes up and says, How the hell are you doing? You know? <laughs> oh, we're buddies, you know? Now, you don't hug guys, I know that. But there's a familiarity that we have developed in relationships with teenage boys and girls. We have lost our air of femininity. We, we've lost it. And because we've lost it, you know what's happened? The guys don't like us as much. Now, you know what the kind of girls they're going after sometimes? Are these flirtatious ones. You know what? I don't want a guy that wants a flirtatious girl. Do you know why? Because she is the aggressor. Is a guy strong, the kind of strong man that I need to help me to be better for Christ? No, not if he's going to go after, and not if he's going to be weak and go after a flirtatious girl that's being the aggressor. I always wanted a guy that wanted somebody to sit back. Now, you can tell I'm a bossy type person. If anybody, Jennifer, back there, Jennifer Arnold's been around me. She's been in my house. Holly's been in my house. She knows I get in trouble. Don't I get in trouble? Do you want to stand up and testify about it? <laughs> my husband will say, now, Loretta, I'm here. I can take care of it. Yes, dear. <laughs> you know, I, so I, I'm still learning how to be a lady. But you know what? I want a strong husband. You know what, girls? I'm afraid to tell you this. But if you are going to go after guys that go from one girl to another because she's a pretty face and because she's flirtatious and because she throws herself at him, if you like that kind of guy then you're going to get that kind of guy. And you won't like it when you get him home, honey. I'm telling you, you won't like it. So I see, I see teenage girls, and they're just, you know, horsing around each other, and they hit each other like this. <laughs> you come up to a guy, and you hit him, you know, and you say, oh, you're just too familiar. Do you know this, the Bible's talking about not, it's good for a man not to touch a woman? Uh, do you know it's not just because of sexual overtones? It's just not, you know, I know you don't touch him, and, and you get turned on. You know, I don't think that happens to most teenage girls yet, you know. But, do you know what I think? I think the Bible said that because God knew we ladies needed to be ladies. Okay, thank you. Now, you know what happens? When you go to the door, okay, pretend this is a door, right? I'm afraid I'm cheating you out of something now over here. Let me go over here. When you go to the door right here, and you come up to the door, I, do you know, ladies, I come out of grocery stores now, and do you know what I see? I see the ladies carrying the groceries and the man's trailing behind her. I see the ladies carrying the kids and the man walking behind, not a thing in his hand. Do you know that bothers me? Do you know why it bothers me? Because that means the ladies are being the stronger vessel. God didn't mean it to be that way. Do you know why ladies are having so many cysts on their ovaries and having so many uh, problems with stress? Because they keep on taking more on and taking more on. Do you know what I like about being a lady? I just give it away and give it away. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I had this horrendous problem. I can't tell you what it is because I just can't tell you what it is, but it was an awful problem. And I, I was so perplexed about it, and I thought, you know, what am I going to do about this problem? What I? And all of a sudden, it hit me. 
I know what I'll do. I'll go to my husband. He'll take care of it for me. <laughs> so I went to Kevin. I said, now, Kevin, this person said such and such. And I just don't know what to say to him. I don't know how to take care of you. Know, uh, can you? And I was being the weaker vessel. It's great to be weak. And so I'd be in the weaker vessel. And I said, can, honey, can you help me? And he said, oh, I'll take care of that. Not a big deal. And it wasn't him. But you know what? I had it all blown up to this big, big deal. So you know who took care of it? My husband. <laughs> you know what he felt like after I talked to him? Hey, my wife needs me, and I do. I'm not making fun of manhood when I say this, lady. I'm saying it is great to be the weaker vessel. It's great to be a lady. Take advantage of it. Enjoy it. So you know what happens? There's two things that you need to start doing right away to give these guys the opinion that you are a lady. Okay, you know what it is? When you get to a door, you stand there, and you look at them very nicely. You feel like them. What do you want? You just look at it real nicely. Don't you open the door for me? No, you won't be stuck in their arms. You know, I know all the things these teenage boys are going to try to say to you. But you know what? If we have a mass movement of it, <laughs> just think how much fun it'll be. You know, if the girls started being real ladies, and that means when you're walking down the hall, you don't try to have them. Now, that's my tendency. My husband said, hey, I'm here, slow down. You know? The poor man, you know, he's a, he's a methodic. He, he is just such a good person. You know, he's wild, but he is so methodical. Every day, same thing, you know, slow moving. He thinks things through a lot. Uh, me, I don't think. I do, and then I think later. <laughs> I'm glad I got him. I needed him. But anyway, so we'll be walking down the street, and he'll say, hey, hey, you know, I'm here. And so I have to slow down. So I think one of the good things that you teenage girls should start doing, if you want to be treated like a lady, if you want to be liked by guys, is to start letting them open the door for you. Hey, if they give you a hard time about it, who cares? You know who will pick up for you with it? Your youth directors. <laughs> <laughs> Your preachers will love it, won't they? Man, if they start having teenage girls that act like ladies, they will think this is the greatest thing in the world. If they have girls that don't come up and slap the boys on the hand, you know, and hit them over the head because they call them names, you know, ladies don't handle things that way. You know, we have sneakier ways to do it. We get them. You know, it's like a, a knife you stab in their back and twist real slowly, you know. Some of us need to learn that. You know, I, this was not my personality when I was growing up. Believe me, it's hard for me to do this. But I think it's valuable. I think it's necessary. And I have... I have been working with teenage girls for so many years, and the number one problem I find with girls is they are trying to be the stronger vessel. And it's
beautiful about this truth? If you marry a man that's bit, that was a little weaker in any area of his life, I believe it's true. I know it. I've seen it in older people's life. Mrs. John R. Rice said, the reason why Dr. John R. Rice, and he, he, backs her, he backed her up in it. He don't back her now, but he did then. Uh, he said, the, re the reason why Dr. John R. Rice was so great, do you know why? Because he had a good lady behind him. You know, you pastors, why it's so much fun seeing you? Because I know the good works you're doing. And do you know why I know those pastors are doing a good work? Because they got good ladies behind them. Not up in front of them trying to take over and do everything. You know, I could take over that campground real easy. <laughs> There's a lot of things I like to do different. But I don't want to take it over. I want my husband to grow and do and be the stronger vessel to be able to handle it himself. So I'm going to step back. So you, you start this movement of letting the boys open the door for you. Okay? You try that. The second thing I want you to really start doing is make the boys talk with you with dignity. Don't let them feel like they can call you any old name and make fun of you. you if they react to you, do you know what? This is really good. I promise you, it'll work. Guys hate tears. Do you know what you should do? I mean it with all my heart. They, if they give you a hard time, just start crying. If you can't get the tears up because you don't have any in there, just look as hurt as you can go. <laughs> and he'll say, what's the matter? You, you really think I am ugly, don't you? And he'll say, and he'll, now he might want to joke, right? You know, he might say, yeah, I do think you're ugly. I just can't take people thinking I'm ugly. <laughs> you know, do you know what the guys will do? There is, there's not a teenage boy alive that can take it. Not a teenage. So there's two things I want to. I, I said, do it now. This is what I want you to do now. Number one, let's get these guys to start opening the doors, making us feel like ladies. Number two, I want you to start getting the guys to talk to you with manners. I don't. I don't want boys saying things in front of me that they shouldn't say. And can I be? Can I say this to you, girls? This is just ladies, I think. I don't think it's very appropriate some of the things you all say in front of guys either. I know girls that talk about the time of the month in front of the guys, laugh about it, you know. Man, that's not something we're going to publicize, you know. If you want everybody to know you're on it, you know, it's okay, but don't tell guys. You know, we just, there's so, we have lost our propriety in America, and I'm fighting. And all these ladies are going, yeah, let's fight together. Let's bring it back. Let's get some propriety back. Let's be ladies and enjoy being ladies. You know, people have sell, sold us a bill of goods. They tell us, oh, you're being used, you're being taken advantage of. You know what? I don't do a thing for my husband. Isn't that good? Do you know who I do it for? God. Can God take advantage of me? All he wants, because he died for me. You know, can, just because some, I serve, you know, when we're, the teenage girls serve the guys sometimes and things like that, and we make you, you know, do for the guys, and you think, oh, you know, I'm a slave. You know what? If you, you are a slave if you're doing it for him, but if you're doing it for Jesus, you're not being taken advantage of and you're not being a slave. So how can you, how can you be, in, be liked by, boy, by boys? By being a lady. I'm running out of time and I want to skip that one about the friends and go right to parents and leaders. You know what? I've been thinking about what is the number one problems and reasons why young people don't feel like their parents and leaders don't like them. Can I tell you the two things I think happen? Number one, I think that they, when a parent or a leader gives you a suggestion, you know, they say you should wear your hair differently or you shouldn't wear that dress, it doesn't look right. Or, you know, they give you a suggestion, a constructive suggestion. I think when they say that to you that you feel put down. Therefore, you react against them and this big giant cycle starts. So you flare up at them or if you don't flare up openly like some of you are too sneaky to do, you do it underhandedly, you know, just stomp off or you give them a look and go off. You know, I go to churches now a lot because we're missionaries and we're living off of, of by faith and we go to churches and my husband preaches and I see so many teenage girls and how they talk to their mother. I am astounded. It, now, number one, my mom wouldn't have let me talk like that. My mom, you think I'm, my personality came straight from my mom. If she, if I talked to her like some of you girls talk to your mom, she'd have, Jeff slapped me. Man, she'd have knocked me against the wall, put a hole in the wall, whatever, you know. That's how she is. But some of your moms love you a little too much, I think. They think they're, they're doing you a favor. 
you know what I'm afraid of? Sometimes I think because your mothers are so busy serving the Lord and taking care of other younger kids and <laughs> taking care of uh, uh, the house, keeping it clean and the laundry done, and I think they feel guilty they don't get to spend more time with you, so they let you buy with things. And they're not doing you a favor at all. And you know what I'm saying to you? Is I'm saying, I am saying to you as the follower, let's grow up in our way of taking suggestions. Do you know when my, when my mother, I'm 33 years old, two months ago my mother said, you know Loretta, your makeup doesn't look real good. I said, what? She said, no, I, I mean it. I've been noticing you look pale, you don't look good. And I said, well, I've been buying this cheaper makeup, you know, because your missionary's budget, you know. And I, so I was laughing along with her, you know, and all that. And she said, well, and I felt funny when she said it. You know, I felt like you did. I wanted to bristle up and say, well, you don't look good either, Mom. You know? <laughs> I wanted to say all those things. But you know what? I'm a, I am mature enough now to say, okay, Mom, wh what do you think I should do different? And, you know, we were, and I was able to take that s criticism from her, that suggestion from her. Do you know, if you would just stop to think, why does your mom give you that suggestion? Why does, you t why does she tell you, you you look trashy in that outfit? Why does she tell you that she doesn't like that outfit on you? Because she loves you. She's trying to help you to appear a certain way. Now, when I'm talking to moms, you know what I say? Mom, can you just put up with a little bit more? As long as it's not immodest, can you let them wear it? You know, I, I say that to them. But you know what I'm saying to you? Why don't you grow up in, your man, in the way that you take suggestions from your mom? Why don't you practice saying nice things? You know what? Immediately, as soon as somebody gives me a suggestion, they go, oh, you think so? You know, I have words I use so that my temper doesn't fly first. You know, if you use your first words, they're probably going to be wrong words. So you get your pat answers down, and you say that. Now, another thing about suggestions is correction. Can you understand something? Correction doesn't come to you because the person hates you. The greatest thing I ever learned was my mother loved me enough to spank me with a fly swatter when I was 10 years old. She said, do you really think she loves you? Yes, because she was trying to get the devil out of me. I have the devil in me. I really do. You can tell I told my stories. I want you to think of something, okay? We're going we're gonna to say, my mother loved me enough to, and I want you to think of something that you know your mom did to you to try to help you in a certain area of your life, okay? It can be give you a spank or teach you how to dress or anything that she gave to you that at the time you remember you really didn't like it too well. Does anybody really like a spanking when they're getting it? I got a four-year-old daughter. I make her wrap her arms around my legs and I bend down and I take a paddle or I take my hand and spank her bo bare bottom. Does she like it? No way! Ah, 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 ah. But you know what? Hopefully, when she's a teenage or your, your age, she's not going to have a problem with wetting her pants. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to help her with problems that I see she has. And your mom's trying to help you. So, I want you to think of something, all right? We're going to chant it. Say, my mother loved me enough to, and everybody's going to say what it was out loud. And I'm going to say, spank me with a fly sword when I was 10 years old, okay? You think of something. You got something? How many of you got something? Think of something. This is a do it right now. You can't think of anything your mom loved you for? How are you? Your mom sit right back there. <laughs> I'm giving her a hard time. Okay, how many of you thought of something right now? Oh, only part of you, but I'll take the part. At least some of you are with me. Okay, ready? Now we're going to say my mother loved me enough to spank me with a flash water when I was 10 years old. Whatever you said. Tell me what you said, Mrs. Mann. Oh, my Oh! No, no. Tell me what, let me see. What did you say? You won't tell me? You're too embarrassed. Can you, I know you're not embarrassed. Tell me what she said. I couldn't think of You couldn't think of anything? Your mom don't love you very much. My mom, I could think of lots of things she did. She wouldn't let me go across the street and do what I wanted to do, you know. She wouldn't let me play outside when I wanted to play outside. As a teenager, she wouldn't let me go to a ball game one night, and I really wanted to go bad. I remember that. I'll take it to the grave with me, you know. <laughs> so, when you think about, okay, now think about your father. Now, I can't relate to you with fathers because my father was an alcoholic. He, they were divorced when, they, when in third grade. They were divorced. I didn't have him around. So the only thing I can say about my father is there were times when he provided funds for me. So I can say, my father loved me enough to give me money to buy a typewriter in high school. I remember that. I had to beg for it, but at least he gave it to me, you know? So now, some of you are having problems with your dad. You know what? It's not your dad that's having problems. It's you and your attitude. You think he's out to get you, and in reality, he's trying to help you. And when you're my age... 33 years old, the age of Jesus, by the way. When you're my age, 
When you're my age, you're going to look back and say, hey, I know why I did that. You know what I can't stand? Is why wait till you're old to find this out? Learn it now. I, you know what I like? The, the college girls and the guy giving their testimonies. But I wish some teenagers, are they going to later? Yeah. I want them to get up there and say, right now, I know my mom loves me. And I have gratitude toward her. I don't want to wait till I'm old to learn this stuff. I'm in a hurry to learn everything I can learn right now. So what did your father do for you? How many of you can think of something? Okay, oh good, good, good. Okay, you ready? Let's say, my father loved me enough to buy me a typewriter when I was in high school. Okay? You said, we'll over. Okay, now, think about a teacher. I had teachers that were really mean. They made me do projects upon projects upon projects. This one guy gave us a seven-page test one time. Seventh grade in history. We were supposed to learn everything we wanted to learn about Abraham Lincoln. And we were going to take an essay test, seven pages. Did I like it? No way. I hated it. I thought it was the dumbest project I've ever heard of. Dumbest test I've ever heard of. Who can just sit there and write for pages and pages and pages? Everything you know. I didn't know much. That was my problem. I didn't like it because of that. So, but you know what happened? Can I tell you this? After I took that test, I made an A plus on that test. First that A plus I'd made since... I was in first grade, probably. So that guy got up there, Mr. Combs was his name. I'll never forget it. He got up there and he said, I have an A plus, A number one paper here. And I said, oh, I wonder who it is. You know how they are. <laughs> yeah. who, who's the teacher's pet today, you know? And so he said, A number one, good paper, you know? And I said, oh, that's great, you know? So he said, and it's Loretta Haynes. I, I said, what? You know, I, I did that. I went, what? And all the kids around me, because they didn't think I... They knew I couldn't do it, you know. They said, and they looked at me and I said, I didn't know what to do, so you smile. <laughs> so, so he said, hey, you know what paper? And he started reading part of my paper out loud to the class. He said, this is a great paper. She really studied. She worked hard. And I did, but I'd never done any, it never done any good before, you know, when I was studying hard. It, 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 I never retained much, you know what I mean? So that teacher, when he gave me the test, I didn't like it. Hated it. Thought it was terrible. Thought it was stupid. Give me a seven-page test, an essay test. After I took the test, can I be honest with you? After that seventh grade, my grades were always A's and B's. Do you know what I think happened? When I got that praise in front of the whole class, I said, you know, maybe I can do pretty good. And my attitude ch changed toward teachers. My attitude. Now, you know what? I'm not, I don't have your teachers here. And I'm, I'm not, I can't say to them, hey, brag on Mary Laughlin in class. She needs it. I can't say, uh, give her some encouragement. I can't say that to them. But you know what I can say to you? You know what? Just grow up yourself. You're just determining your heart today. I'm going to do better in school. I'm going to try my hardest. And that way, the teachers will like me. I don't want to be a teacher's pet, but I want to be liked. So, think of something your teacher did for you. We don't have time to say it now, but think about it. What did your teacher do that you really didn't like? Think about grade school. Maybe it would be easier for you to relate. Because right now, you're too much in the heat of the battle to think that any of your high school teachers are good. <laughs> okay, so think about that. Now, can I be honest with you? When I got saved at 17, you're taking your coats off. I think you need to. I think it's warm in here, but I think it's great too. When I was 17, I got saved, and I went to this, the church that I got saved in for one whole year. During that time, there was a man, a young man there <coughs> named Rick Carlos who was, he had been uh, on drugs and things like that. He's about 28 years old. He had, he had gotten saved, and his life was changed. He was a bus captain to an 18-year-old. He looked like super Joe spiritual. You know, to me, I thought, wow, this is great, you know, somebody living for God, you know, and I'd never seen a boy like this. Well, him and his wife started having some problems. Now, remember, he had just been saved two years. So Rick sort of started coming around our house a lot. Now, I was just a teenager. If it happened now, not, not when I'm married, of course, but if I was th this, uh, this old now, I'd understand what was going on. But he started coming around, and he'd just drop in and talk to me and all that stuff. Well, this guy started liking me. And you know what's worse? I started liking him. He was a married man. Was going to get divorced in just a few months. Do you know what happened? My mom said to me, I, I went, he came up to me, and he on the porch, he said, you know, Loretta, will you marry me? And I said, what? You know, I, I didn't know I'd progress that far. Sometimes people can like you too much. You better be careful. Don't take this too far, you know. Uh, but he's, he asked me if I'd marry him. So I didn't give him an answer right then because I didn't know, but I knew I liked him. I thought he was a good guy. I thought he was living for God, and I thought he was going to really serve God all of his life. So you know what happened? My preacher called me in the office. He said, Red, 
He said, I've been hearing things. And I said, you have? <laughs> I knew what he was talking about. You know what your preacher's talking about. As soon as he calls me office, you know what it is. And he said, he said, I'm real concerned about you and Rick. I said, well, I'm real concerned too, because I don't really know what's going on, you know. And I said, I like him, and he seems like a good guy. Don't you think so, preacher? And he said, yeah, oh, he's a very good guy, you know. Your preacher's smart. He's not going to put him down in front of you. But just because he tells you he's all right, you know, doesn't mean he wants him for you. So in the process of time, to make a long story short, um, I had to break up with Rick because my preacher said so, and then number two, my mom said so. Loretta, he's not the guy for you. And I said, you don't, you mean it, Mom? Yep. He's not the guy for you. And all her reasons were wrong. To me, at that time, she said, you shouldn't marry somebody that's already been married. You're a pure girl. You're a virgin. Go marry, marry somebody that's like yourself. I thought, but he's a good guy. He's going to live for God. You know, all, everything that she said didn't make sense at that time. Now, believe me, at 33, looking back, every word she says makes sense. Right now, you don't understand what your leaders are saying. They don't make sense to you, but believe me, they'll come a time when you will. Would you just sit back and take their correction now and understand that they're doing it for your own good and not against you? They're doing it because they love you? If you could grow up to the point where you could really believe this, you, your whole life would be changed. It really would. Your whole attitude would be changed. You get tired of people saying, oh, you're just rebellious. You know what? Part of the reason why they say you're rebellious is because you act it. You know, I'm not rebellious. I know myself. You know, it's not how you seem to yourself that's important. It's how other people see you. If somebody says you are rebellious, you better take notice. What is my attitude doing? What do I portray with my attitude that makes people think I'm rebellious? How should I change? Go to your youth director's wife. Go to your pastor's wife. Go to somebody and say, Man, I get fed up when people say I'm rebellious. What am I doing that makes you feel that way? Well, you never talk to adults. You just stay in your little crowd. You know, I could go through the list. I have a whole list of things that you could do to change that, but I'm not going to take the time to talk about it. All I'm going to do is say this to you. If people are putting you down in some way, if adults, leadership is putting you down in some way, go to somebody you love and admire and say, my mom says this. What am I doing wrong? And let them really tell you. Let them know you really want to know what it is you need to change. And you know what? I think they'll be honest with you. I think that they'll, I think then, after you change whatever it is, that leadership will really like you. You know what? I saw Rick Collis back, see, in December of last year. I walked in this uh, party goods store to rent something. I was helping somebody at the wedding in, back in Martinsburg. I walked in there, long-haired guy. Came up to me. Come here, I'll show you what he did. I about died. There was a counter right here. He walked up to me. He, he said, Loretta Haynes, and he hugged me like this. I said, oh, he didn't know I had standards now, you know. He went oh, like this, and I said, oh, hi, Rick, you know, like this. I hardly knew him. Long hair, obvious signs of being on alcohol or drugs again. Was my mom right? I'm afraid so. I like my husband a lot more than I would Rick Collis. You will like whoever God's got for you a lot better than the guy you got picked out for yourself. Thank you. So, you know what I'm just trying to say to you? Instead of thinking you do know a lot, teenagers are smarter than we give them the credit for adults. But there are still quite a few things you need to learn. You know, I go to older people and ask their counsel. I want them to tell me. You know, I, Mrs., I, I went, did something like two weeks ago and I went to Mrs. Evans and I said, I did such and such. Now, did I do it for the right reason? Was that good? I did it and on and on. on. And I talked to her about it. If I can be teachable at 33, why can't you at 14, 15, 16, whatever age you are? Last thing, very, very important thing, is how can you be liked by God? Very short, very sweet. Let me just tell you this. I, I don't think that you have to serve God just when you get out of high school. I don't think you have to serve God and live for God and wait until you get to a certain age. I think that God could like you and you could have a personal relationship with God right now. But you know what, 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 what I'm saying to you right now? Is it's all dependent on you and your attitude. See, I love you so much. And I don't think you can understand that. But I do. And I relate to your problems so much. And I relate to your hurts so much. that I, But when I was 17... When I got on to God, when I turned on to God, so to speak, my life was completely changed. Do you know why? 
because my attitude was changed toward him. The, fa- the Heavenly Father meant something to me. I, you know, I worry about you second-generation Christians. How many of you were raised in a Christian home? Raise your hand for me. I worry about you. Oh, when you come to camp, I try to zero in on you more than anybody else. Do you know why? Because I am, I am scared to death. You're going to rely on your parents' Christianity to get you through. And you can't. You can't. I promise you, you can't. You know what I wish you'd do? I wish as these men preach today, and I love hard preaching. I want it. I want it. And you know what? You should be responding. You should be shaking your head. You don't say, Amen, preacher. You know, we don't do that here in Baptist church. You know, no, no, no. But you can shake your head. You can <coughs> sing when they're singing. You can be responsive to spiritual things. You can walk down the aisle and make a decision for Christ. But as they're preaching and talking about things that you know, you know you need a change in your life, I wish you'd do it. Quit fighting it and say, you know, I want to be liked by God a little bit more. I want God to think I'm special to him. I want him to say, Loretta, I love you. I love you so much I died for you. But you know what? I like you too. You know why he likes me? Because I love him and I try to serve him with all my heart. I try to do right. I don't, you know what? I don't wear dresses because my husband says I can't. He does say I can't wear, I mean, I can't wear pants. He says that, you know. He's like that. He's just a snot. No, 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 he's not that. I don't wear dresses because my husband says I can't wear pants. You know why I wear dresses? Because I want to please God. (laughs) Isn't that exciting? You know why you wear dresses? I'm afraid some of you wear dresses because your mama says you can't wear pants. Or your daddy says you can't wear pants. I don't want you to wear dresses for that reason. Now wear them no matter what. You obey your parents while you're living under their roof. But I wish, oh, how I wish that some of you would get a burden in your heart to say, I'm going to take on some of these biblical standards. I'm going to be a soul winner because God wants me to be a soul winner. Not just because my mom makes me, kicks me out the door every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. You know, I'm going to work a bus route because God wants me to work a bus route and I want to help young people. I want to help... Uh, Uh, Little kids love Jesus a little bit more. You understand what I'm saying? How do you be liked by other people? How do you be liked by boys? How do you be liked by your peers? I didn't even get to talk about that. How do you be liked by your mother and your father and your teachers? How do you be liked by God? God Almighty who loves you so much? You know what? It's just a matter of adding a little maturity to yourself. Don't be a carnal Christian anymore. Don't be an immature person. You know, if you have to dig in your Bible... If you have to dig in your Bible, dig in it, grow, learn, fast, fast forward. Now, you know what? At the same point, can I say this? Still be giggly. <laughs> Teenage girls can get together and laugh about the silliest things. I, I mean, when I get together with ladies, you know, I'm still a teenage girl. When I get together with ladies my own age, I sit and giggle for hours about nothing. Then you go, you ever done this? You know, I laugh really hard about something when I'm with my friends. And then I go off and I tell my husband about it and he just looks at me like, what were you laughing about? You know, he don't understand. We girls can have so much fun. So I'm kind of telling you to be kind of a paradox. I'm saying be mature in your attitude about being a lady. I'm saying be mature in trying to... Uh, Take correction and suggestions from your parents and leaders. I'm saying be mature in, the, in your service to God. Take on the standards for yourself and forget about the fact that you've been doing it for your mom and dad or your, anybody, whoever it is. But then I'm saying stay a teenager. Don't try to grow up too fast. Some of you wear, you, it's all right to wear makeup as a teenager, but don't wear it so much that you have to look like you're 30, 33 years old. You know, don't wear clothes that tr- to make you look like you're so old that people wouldn't recognize you that you're 14, 15, 16. Don't be in such a hurry to be old. See how weird I am. I just spoke a whole 50 minutes on being mature, and now I'm saying, but stay young, too. I'm kind of confusing, aren't I? But there's a great truth in this. And I believe there's something that God has for you in it. And you know what I pray, and I know all the ladies in the room, they would like to be up here saying this. They feel it as much as I do. And you know what? When you get our age, you'll feel it too. If you care about young people, you will, I mean. So please stay young, but act a little older. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for these girls and the way they've listened. I know that maybe things weren't at the best way for them to learn and listen, but I thank you that they did. I thank you that they tried, most of them. I pray you'll bless them. Lord, as the preaching goes on now, 
So many people have done so much work for this conference, Lord. And it's because they love young people. I pray you'll bless it and help lives to be changed because of this one day. And we'll give you the praise, Lord, because we know we can't do it in ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen.